Justification. It's one of those really long Bible words, and chances are you fell asleep while I was saying it the first time. So, by the way, don't go to sleep on me yet. In fact, don't ever go to sleep on me because chances are you might drool, and drool's kind of gross, and sometimes it smells. So, you know, just don't do that. Uh, justification. I think it's one of those words that we can take and kind of break down into to smaller words to make it make more sense, like just if I cat I on, which that doesn't work. It, doesn't make any sense. So, uh, but seriously, what does it mean? What does justification mean? I mean, it's it's a big concept in the Word of God. We we see words like justify and justified and justifier and and justification. We see those words over and over again. But what exactly does it mean? I was thinking about it, and I was trying to think of a really good way to illustrate the word justification to you guys. That would be kind of simple to understand. And this is kind of lame. The only thing I could think about was was this yellow piece of paper, this, this yellow card. Uh, to you, this probably doesn't mean a whole lot. But when I was in high school, um, if you missed a day of school or you missed a class, you had to go into the high school office and check in and, and get one of these yellow cards. It, it literally kind of became your golden ticket. And uh, we had like a keeper of the golden tickets, our, our high school secretary. Her name was Miss McMinn. And so you went before Miss McMinn and, and really you only got one shot, do not miss your chance to blow. You had one chance to explain to Miss McMinn why you missed school that day or why you'd missed that class. And so it had better be a good excuse. And so Miss McMinn would, would give you this card. And on this card had one of three options checked. There were three boxes and she would check one of them. The first one was excused. The second one was explained, and the third one was unexcused. Obviously, you wanted to have an excused absence. That was the one everybody wanted to have. An excused absence was something like going to the doctor if you were sick and, and turning in a doctor's note. They were always pretty you know, strict about that. Uh, or maybe you had a death in your family, which, by the way, I'm sure no one ever lied about. And, uh, and so those were excused absences. And, and here's how it would work. You would take that golden ticket and that little yellow card. You'd take it to your teacher, and, uh, and she, he or she would look at it, and, and they would see that it was excused. So they would look at it and look over it and then give you exactly what you needed like for any kind of test that you might have missed or any kind of notes or anything that was covered in the class before, they were very willing to help you. That was an excused absence. The explained absence wasn't quite as good as the excused absence because an explained absence was something like, well, I would have come to class but my alarm didn't go off or you know, I was on my way to school and my car ran out of gas. I mean, they were kind of good excuses but they weren't quite as good as the excused status. So they were explained. Another thing that kind of stunk about the explained absence was your teacher kind of had a 50-50 shot of excusing the absence. Like they might help you but they might not. It put the ball in their court. They got to decide whether or not they wanted to excuse the absence. And so you might have a teacher that had had a really bad day and they said, you know what, sorry, I'm not going to give you the notes. And so not quite as good as an excused absence. Then the third, third and final uh, check mark that you could get would be the unexcused absence. And you definitely didn't want that. It was kind of the dreaded mark on your card. Uh, when you saw it, you'd, you'd turn it into your teacher and and, uh, and they would kind of frown at you because they knew what that meant. An unexcused absence was something like just totally skipping school on purpose or you know maybe you tried this one out, uh, I needed a personal day. Well then the secretary would say unexcused and if you tallied up enough of those bad boys then you got into kind of some serious trouble. I think you could get suspended maybe or maybe even expelled. I didn't really explore that option a whole lot so I don't really know. Justification. What exactly does it mean to justify? Basically, to justify something means that you're looking for an excuse. It's kind of like when you're standing before the secretary and you're, you're pleading your case for your yellow card. You're making your case for it. But am I excused or not? Turn in your Bibles to Romans 3.23. Romans 3.23. It's a really popular verse. It's one that you've probably heard a lot of times, but let's look there together. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's a problem. Imagine that you've totally skipped school on purpose 
and that next day you know that you're going to have to make that trip to see Miss McMinn or to see your high school secretary. You know that you're going to have to go and make your case before her. You've got an option. You can either, you've got two options. You can either be honest about it or you could flat out lie because you know which mark you deserve to have marked. You know that you skip school on purpose. You know that it's unexcused and there's really no way for you to explain it. Now put that in a spiritual context. When we stand before God one day, we're going to show Him our yellow card. And God with His righteous judgment will deliver the verdict. Romans 3.23 says, we've all sinned. We've all got this sin problem. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We know exactly what mark we deserve on that yellow card. We know exactly what we should get. We know that we have a sin problem and really there's no way for us to excuse that problem ourselves. But check this out. Romans 3.23 followed by 24. Uh, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. We're justified. You see, something cool happens when you take that word justify and you put it alongside of God. Something cool happens to the word justify when God enters the equation. Remember, the word justify really means to, to look for an excuse. Maybe you've heard somebody use this expression before. They were, they were looking to justify their actions. It really just means they were looking for a way to excuse their behavior, the way that they were living, and they wanted to look right. Um, we say things like this sometimes. Well, you know, I, I was going to work out last night, but I was just so tired. <laughs> We're trying to justify, look for an excuse. Or, I was going to do my homework, but I really wanted to get my head off of schoolwork for a while. I just needed to, to kind of take a break, and so I played Call of Duty till 3 in the morning. You're looking to justify yourself. Or maybe you've heard this one. I was going to go on the youth retreat. You know, I really was planning on it, but then I, I just I had so much schoolwork. And so I couldn't, which by the way, really, you want to use schoolwork to get out of a youth retreat? Usually you're looking for any excuse not to do the schoolwork. But anyway, something cool happens to the word justify when God enters the picture. God changes the Y to an I and he adds ED. You see that word justify means to look for an excuse, but the word justified means to be excused. God found a way to justify us. God has given us an excuse. His name is Jesus Christ. We don't have to come up with lame excuses anymore because God's given us one. There's an old school definition of that word justified that you've probably heard before. Sometimes you'll hear preachers use this word a lot or use this definition a lot. It's a, really, it's a good definition because it's easy to use and it just makes a lot of sense. Justified means just if I'd never sinned. Because of Jesus' blood, God's grace has excused us. We've been justified. Remember that yellow card? Jesus took the yellow card and He checked off the option that says excused and He wrote it in His blood. So what does God do? This is the beautiful part. God looks at it. He looks over it. And He gives us exactly what we need. Have you been justified? If you have been justified, then you know that you don't need any more excuses. You know that Jesus Christ is the only thing that you need. But if you haven't been justified, it's time to stop making excuses. What are you waiting for?